We made it to the end, guys. Chapter 21 will focus on infections of the genitourinary system. There are two parts of the genitourinary system. The urinary tract, whose function is to remove or filter unwanted substances from blood and forming urine. There's also the genital system, whose main function is reproduction. The urinary tract consists of the kidneys, which filter, the ureters that transport urine, the bladder, which stores urine, and the urethra that also transports urine. In males, the urethra is the final organ of the reproductive tract. Females have the urethra separate from the vagina. Here we can see the kidneys, ureters, bladder, and urethra. The urinary tract provides its own defenses. The urine being flushed out helps to also flush microbes. The normal biota can be threats to the urinary system. The microbes differ in the GI tract compared to the urinary tract and typically can't adhere to urinary epithelium. Urine has protective properties by being acidic. It also contains lysozyme, which can destroy cell walls, lactoferrin, which inhibits microbial growth, and antibodies. The male reproductive system functions to, functions to produce and transport sperm. The testes produce both hormones and sperm. It also consists of the epididymis, vas deferens, and prostate. The external organs include the scrotum and penis. The urine transported in the system helps to flush microbes. The female reproductive system consists of the uterus, fallopian tubes, ovaries, vagina, and cervix. The defenses of a woman's reproductive tract changes throughout life. The vagina consists of a mucous membrane, which contains mucus. Antibodies are also present. The major defense of the female reproductive system is changes of pH. As estrogen is released, bacteria ferment and release acidic products. Prior to puberty, the pH of the vagina is about 7. Once puberty occurs, the microbiome also changes and during childbearing years may harm the fetus. The lower urethra has a plethora of microbes, while the upper tract has a smaller amount. The female urethra, as close as it is to the anus, may be a route to transfer bacteria from the GI tract to the bladder. The penis consists of Pseudomonas and Staphylococcus, but differs in uncircumcised individuals. The urethra contains Pseudomonas and Staph Staphylococcus as well. Pathogens that cause STIs may become long-term residents. Circumcision has an effect on the normal flora. Sometimes microbes take up residence in the upper female reproductive tract. As mentioned previously, prior to puberty, the pH is neutral. After puberty, the environment becomes acidic and lactobacillus predominates. This species keeps other microbes at bay. Canada albicans is also present. In both male and female urinary tracts, we find species like Streptococcus, Staphylococcus, and Gardnerella. The female genital tract in childhood and postmenopause is the same. In childbearing years, Lactobacillus is a dominant species in the female genital tract. The male genital tract contains Pseudomonas, Staphylococcus, or anaerobic gram-negative species. Generally, urine flushing helps to keep pathogens out. However, urine is a good growth medium. Cystitis is an infection of the bladder. Pyelonephritis is an infection of the kidney. While urethritis is a urethral infection. Urinary tract infections may target the bladder, kidney, or both. Some symptoms seen include pain, frequent urge to urinate with burning, cloudy urine, and fever. If the kidney is affected, back pain and fever will be seen. 
It's considered uncomplicated if only the bladder is infected. Infect infections must be determined as being caused in the healthcare setting or outside. Catheters are a common source. 95% of UTIs are caused by our normal flora of the GI tract. E. coli is a major culprit with others like S. saprophyticus and Enterobacter species. The mode of transmission is an opportunistic transfer from the GI tract. Females see these more commonly because of the closeness of the urethra to the anus. UTIs can be treated with trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. Over-the-counter remedies like azo help to alleviate the symptoms. Many E. coli strains are penicillin resistant. Next are our reproductive diseases. Not all are sexually transmitted as we will see in a moment. A recent CDC report showed that a few STIs are at the highest rates. We will first focus on discharge diseases, which are transferred via the fluids con contacting mucosal surfaces. They include trichomoniasis, gonorrhea, and chlamydia. With gonorrhea, men may experience symptoms like urethritis, pain when urinating, and a yellow discharge. A large amount of individuals experience no symptoms at all, which helps the spread. It can be spread to other structures of the reproductive tract and can lead to infertility. Females will typically see both the urinary and genital tract affected. Mucus, pus, or bloody discharge may be seen along with painful urination. Complications may occur and an inflammation of the fallopian tubes may be seen. Pelvic inflammatory disease may lead to scar tissue formation which blocks the fallopian tubes, which can lead to infertility or ectopic pregnancies where implantation occurs in the tubes. Gonorrhea may enter the bloodstream, cause chronic arthritis, papular rashes on limbs, and rarely meningitis or endocarditis. Babies may also be infected by carrier mothers and are vulnerable to eye infections. Eye drops or ointments are applied to prevent this. The bacterium Neisseria gonorrhea is the causative agent. In gonorrhea, uses fimbria to attach and enter cells. The bacterium can turn on or off genes for fimbria production. This phase variation enables the bacterium to confuse our immune system. It can also destroy IgA and release endotoxins. The mode of contact is direct contact via sexual contact or vertically. It is one of the most common STIs. The problem with this infection is that a large number of cases are asymptomatic and people are unaware they're spreading it. In males, gonorrhea can be diagnosed by a gram stain of discharge. Females can be diagnosed by ELISAs or PCR or growth on chocolate auger. In gonorrhea, must be grown on a carbon, in a carbon dioxide rich environment. It can also be identified via a catalase test oxidase test, or other biochemical tests. Prevention is achieved by using protection. Most often, individuals are infected with gonorrhea and chlamydia at the same time. Treatment is with doxycycline or azithromycin. This microbe is on the CDC's urgent threat list as it's developed extreme resistance. Chlamydia affects more than 1 million people a year, but may actually be up to seven times that amount due to the fact that many are asymptomatic. The causative agent is the bacterium Chlamydia trichomatis, which is an obligate intracellular parasite with two stages. In males, the symptoms are the same as those seen in gonorrhea. In females, there is an inflammation of the cervix, discharge, and inflammation of the fallopians. 
PID is also occasionally seen. In women, 75% of cases are asymptomatic, which increases chances of PID due to the lack of treatment. Some strains invade the lymphatic system and cause lymphogranuloma venereum, which causes headaches, fever, swollen lymph nodes, with the swelling of the genitalia or anus. Here in the U.S., there's about 500 cases of this form. Infants may also develop eye infections as well as pneumonia. Let's look at the life cycle of chlamydia. The infectious stage is the elementary body, which is phagocytized. Normally, a microbe would be destroyed but this microbe remains in the phagosome and develops into a reticulate body. Those reticulate bodies replicate and then reorganize into elementary bodies, which are released. The ability of chlamydia to grow intracellularly enables it to evade the immune system. The presence of the pathogen causes the release of cytokines, which induces inflammation. The pathogen is harbored in humans, and the mode of transfer is vertically in sexual contact. Diagnosis can be made using PCR, an ELISA, or direct fluorescent antibody detection. Urine tests are also available, but not as accurate in women. Prevention, as with all STIs, is with the use of protection. The CDC recommends annual screening of young women. Treatment is with doxycycline or azithromycin, and all sexual partners should be treated. Vaginitis is an inflammation of the vagina, and a key symptom is itching. Women may also experience burning and discharge. Causative agents include bacteria and protozoans, but Canada albicans is the most common cause, which is a yeast. Vaginosis does not include inflammation. C. albicans is dimorphic, meaning it can shift between two forms. It's part of our normal flora. The yeast can be identified in a wet prep or gram stain. The pseudohyphae are indicative of a yeast infection. Normally, Canada is not invasive. It can enter the bloodstream and is seen in hospitalized patients or AIDS patients. The mode of transmission is opportunistic. Anything that alters the normal biota in the vagina allows for Canada to overgrow. It can be caused by broad spectrum antibiotics. Diabetics and pregnant women are more vulnerable. It can be transmitted via sexual contact and can be passed back to the original partner. Some women experience frequent infections. There's no vaccine, but topical and oral azole drugs may be administered. Vaginosis does not cause inflammation and is known as bacterial vaginosis. Symptoms seen include discharge with a fishy odor. A shift of the microbiota is often the cause. It's a polymicrobial infection with Gardnerella species as a cause, as well as Mobiluncus. Not all is known about this infection. It can, however, lead to PID, infertility, and ectopic pregnancies. Its mode of transmission is not sexually transmitted, but it may be associated with it. In vaginosis infections, the pH of the vagina is higher. A stain of vaginal secretions can be used in diagnosis. The epithelial cells are covered with the bacteria and are considered clue cells. Treatment is with oral or topical metronidazole or clindamycin. Trichomonas vaginalis is a protozoal infection. In half of cases, patients are asymptomatic. 
Males generally don't have symptoms, while women experience a white to green frothy discharge. Chronic infections may increase chances of acquiring AIDS or infertility. The mode of transmission is sexual contact. T. vaginalis does not undergo shifts inside the host and can be treated with metronidazole. Prostatitis is an inflammation of the prostate. Acute prostatitis is almost always caused by a bacteria from normal mi bi microbiota. Chronic prostatitis is often caused by bacteria, although some forms don't have a bacterium as the cause. Symptoms include pain in the groin, urge to urinate, difficulty urinating, blood in urine, or painful ejaculation. Prostatitis can be treated with ciprofloxacin or levofloxacin. Genital ulcer diseases lead to lesions and include syphilis, cancroid, and herpes. Syphilis is broken down into three clinical stages along with latent periods. The spirochete bacterium can be found in lesions and blood cultures in the first two stages. Primary syphilis includes a canker or ulcer at the entry. The ulcers are painless and heal in three to six weeks. At this stage, the bacterium has entered circulation. Secondary syphilis appears about six months after the canker heals. Symptoms in this stage include fever, headache, sore throat, swollen lymph nodes, a rash on the skin, and lesions. It may have complications that last for years. 30% of cases have a latent period with no activity for 20 years or more. The bacterium is not detected and this stage is rare due to the use of antibiotics. In the tertiary stage, damage can occur in the heart. Gumas or tumors develop in tissues and can impair function. Syphilis can also be transferred across the placenta and can inhibit growth, lead to mild defects, miscarriages, or stillbirth. The causative agent of syphilis is the bacterium Troponema pallidum. T. pallidum combine, can bind with a hook, tip, replicate, and penetrate capillaries allowing it to move into circulation. Humans are the host of syphilis, which is destroyed easily but can be protected for hours by body secretions. Its mode of transmission is sexual contact. Syphilis has been around for centuries and the rates of it have been increasing worldwide. Blood tests and microscopy can be used in diagnosis. Prevention includes detection and treatment of contacts as well as protection. In the past, mercury and salver sand were effective. However, they are toxic, so the treatment now is ciprofloxacin or levofloxacin. General herpes may lead to asymptomatic cases, fluid-filled vesicles, malice, fever, or swelling in the groin. experience recurrent infections on average four to five times a year. Some patients may experience encephalitis, which can lead to mental disturbances and a coma. Herpes can also be transmitted to the fetus before or after birth. It can be destructive or fatal. Pregnant women are screened to determine the type of deliver, delivery necessary. The causative agents for general herpes includes both HSV-1 and HSV-2. HSV-1 is associated with cold sores, but depending on the type of sexual contact, 
can be transmitted to the genital region. The herpes viruses become latent, which enables it to be maintained in cells. The herpes viruses can be reactivated by stress, menstruation, or other infections. The virus then produces variants. Four billion people are infected with herpes worldwide, and the viruses are transmitted via direct contact or vertically. Up to 90% of people may experience symptoms they don't notice or are asymptomatic. Herpes can be diagnosed by the lesions, PCR, or antibody testing. Avoiding contact is a preventative measure. Treatment includes acyclovir and derivatives. Sometimes patients may take medicine to shorten a reoccurrence. The human papillomavirus, or HPV, causes genital warts, which can occur on any structure in the genital region. Sometimes the warts may be flat or masses called condyloma acuminata. Some strains can target the cervix, which can lead to cancer. Males can also get cancer from HPV. Mouth and throat cancer may also occur. There are over 100 types of HPV, which may target the skin or mucous membranes. Five types of HPV are associated with cervical cancer, with others causing vulvar or penile cancer. These viruses contain oncogenes, which were previously discussed. They lead to uncontrolled cell growth. Most sexually active adults will acquire HPV, and the mode of transmission is direct contact or auto-inoculation. PCR and pap smears can be used in screening and diagnosis. Protection is again a preventative measure along with the HPV vaccine that contains up to nine types of HPV. This provides protection against cervical cancer and warts. Sometimes other strains that aren't in the vaccine may cause cancers. The pap smear is crucial for detecting cervical changes and should be performed yearly. Infection is incurable but some individuals may rid the body of the virus within years. 